Okay, now we're in the rendering 18 file. This lecture will be focused on the ground plane and specifically the wet street effect. This is a really useful technique and it adds a lot of interest to the illustration. Looking at the street pavement, there is a little texture here from the SketchUp model, but since it does occupy quite a lot of the real estate in our image, we should try to add some more interest in this area. You may be familiar with the wet street effect from architectural photography. Often, photographers will hose down the street or sidewalk in front of the building to add or enhance reflections in the ground plane. You can certainly generate these reflections in a rendering package, but this adds a lot of rendering time. And since we'll be using the no plugin method, let's look at a way to do this just within Photoshop. Once the entourage and most of the coloration is complete in the rest of the image, it's possible to reflect these elements into the street. As a result, this will typically be one of the last steps in the process. Create a new group at the top of the stack and call it Street. Make it orange to stand out. We need to mask this group to just the street area And we can find this in the color export layer. With the magic wand, select this area. I'm seeing that it also picked up the dark gray in the car. That's okay. With the selection two layer, we can easily remove the cars from this selection. Go ahead and mask the street group. Now, back down to the selection two layer, and control click on its thumbnail. Then delete this area from the street group mask. Double check all of this by control clicking on the mask and the marching ants are no longer running up into the car. So that's all set now. Create a new layer within the group and we'll use a big keyboard shortcut for the stamp visible command. This operation will create a flat copy of all visible layers in the entire stack into this new layer. This is different from the merge visible command in that the layer stack is preserved. For this step, that's exactly what we want. As far as I know, the only way to run the stamp visible command is to type Control alt shift e all at once. The window won't look any different, but the thumbnail for this new layer will update, showing a flat copy of the entire canvas. And in the history, Stamp Visible will show up here. Transform the entire layer, and you get a feel for how this will work. Because it's masked, we're only seeing it in the street. In a scene like this, we need to be a little careful with how we're projecting these reflections. I can see three parts of the image that will need to be reflected separately. Moving left to right, there will be the south elevation here from the building corner to the left. That will be one reflection in perspective. The second piece will be the east elevation, the shade side of the new building. It will need to be reflected separately. And the third part is just the close brick building here on the right. So the first thing to do is to slice up this new layer into the three pieces so that we can reflect them independently. With the marquee tool, select a rectangular area from the left edge of the image to the corner of the new building. As long as you get it close, within a few pixels or so, this should be fine. Create a new layer via cut and watch the thumbnails to the right to see what's happening. The image is now split in half between these two layers. Now cut out the east part of the new building. With the lower layer, number 22, I don't need to be careful with the left edge of the selection, but the right edge should be very close to the brick corner. Create a third layer, also via cut, and now let's rename these layers so that we can keep them straight. Left, middle, and right. Start with the left layer. Flip it vertically and slide it down with the free transform tool. I'm watching the left horizon, getting the horizons close together in the reflection and in the source. While still selected, skew, but do not distort.
down to the right until the curve lines up here at the right. You may need to bring the left back up a bit to keep the curves touching. The curve is where the reflection will begin in perspective. At this point, the cars are pretty bad, but the building reflection is reasonably accurate. Hit Enter to commit the change. Let's do the middle. Flip it and slide down. With this slice, you won't be able to really line up the curb, but you want to skew it back up a bit. The reflections will get toned way down and be pretty blurry, so the important thing to look for here is to get the light and dark areas in the building reflected down, and that's okay. The right slice will be just like the left. Flip, slide down, and skew to get the curbs lined up. Looking at the whole image, I can see some weirdness with the cars, and especially the people here. Collapse the street group and move it down the stack. Set it just under the shadows group. And that looks better already. Group these three layers and change the blending mode to soft light. This is pretty dark, and even if we blur it, it will still be too dark. Let's go ahead and add a curves adjustment layer to this group to lighten things up. Go ahead and rename the group Reflections. In the curves, bring up the black end and reduce the overall tonal range, getting it back near where the pavement was before. Let's also crank up that saturation a bit. It's looking a bit dull, especially once we blur everything. Close that out and go to the left layer. Add a motion blur here. The settings will likely be different for these, so for this step, make sure the angle is set to somewhere near 90 degrees. Exactly 90 would be a bit too perfect. Try something like 87, and let's bring that distance down just a bit. This is looking good. I can see we're getting a good read of the reflection versus the tree shadow that we just added in the last session. Run the motion blur filter again, but this time at 93 or 94 degrees. This will make it a little blurry than it might be with just one step at 90 degrees. The reflection is still a bit too strong. Reduce the opacity down to about 60%. We'll do the same thing for the middle. Run the motion blur at about 85 degrees. And I can see that the blur here is really helping us with the perspective problems we were having earlier. That looks good, so let's reuse the same setting for the right. Turn the whole thing off and back on again to see how it's changed the rendering. It's worth masking out some of the unrealistic reflections that are happening, especially over here at the left edge. Add a mask and paint with a soft brush set to black to remove these areas that are distracting. Zoom in close to take a better look. You can see that we still have the texture from the SketchUp model, the shadowing from the trees, and now these reflections. They're all adding up to add a lot of interest in the pavement. While we're still looking at the street, let's quickly indicate a crosswalk here from the plaza over to the left. Create a new layer within the street group, but above the reflections and adjustments. Call it crosswalks. These lines are going to be white, but we'll want to use a hard edge brush. Load up the hard round and reduce the size quite a bit. Since we're still in the street group, these lines will be masked out, so just find a point near the corner and drag to the right. That's a little too wide. Reduce the size of the brush and try again. That's better. Let's get a second one just above. And that one's better. The blending mode of this layer is still set to normal, so it's reading very strong. You could reduce the opacity, or we could change the blending mode to overlay, and this is looking much better.
Take it one step further and add a layer style with a stroke effect of one pixel, giving this element a little bit of a hand-drawn quality as well. Make sure it's set to one pixel, set to multiply, and that's all good. If the cars are a little too close to the crosswalk, just nudge that layer down, and it's still limited to the pavement area. Duplicate that layer for a crosswalk here at the close corner. Move it down, and then skew distort until it looks okay. Of course, you could always recreate it from scratch, but sometimes it can be faster to make a copy and adjust that into place. So it may not be 100% accurate at this point, but since this is meant to be a quick conceptual rendering, we're just implying much of the detail without getting too bogged down. So that's the wet street effect. I hope this will be a useful technique in your own work. In the next lecture, we'll look at some ways to make the illustration look more traditional looking, adding some watercolor effects. I'll see you next time.